Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Hyphenate here. And today we're gonna talk about Silas Soul, a great American man in the 1800s who cared about all other people at a time when many others didn't. He was an activist, abolitionist, a contributor to the Underground Railroad, a United States soldier who fought in the Civil War, and a man who stood up and fought for others to be treated equally. One out of the many terrible massacres of Native Americans happened in 1864. Captain C. Lissol strongly opposed the attack. He is celebrated to this day for his valiant efforts, but not many know of his greatness. This is the true story of C. Lissol. Let's start from the beginning. C. Lissol was born in 1838 in the state of Maine. He and his family soon relocated to Boston, Massachusetts. His parents were very progressive and were abolitionists, people who strongly opposed slavery. In the year 1854, slavery was still very active in the United States. At the time, most of the country was divided by North and South. Northern states were free and Southern states were pro-slavery. Kansas had not yet become a state, but the territory was in between free and slaveholding states. People from both sides flooded Kansas, trying to make Kansas into the state that they wanted. Kansas became known as Bleeding Kansas, as both pro-slavery and anti-slavery people fought against each other constantly. It became a very violent place. Silas Soul's father and older brother William both moved to Kansas to join the abolitionist groups. The following year, Silas and the rest of his family moved to Kansas. Together, they all moved to the city of Lawrence where their house became a very important stop in the Underground Railroad. Now, the Underground Railroad was not an actual railroad. It was an illegal secret organization that helped slaves escape into the northern free states or into Canada. Soon, Silas became a conductor of the Underground Railroad, a person who would escort and guide slaves in between safe houses and stations. It was a really dangerous job, as both slaves and people a part of the Underground Railroad risked their lives, facing death if they were caught. Aside from being a part of the Underground Railroad, Silas soon joined the abolitionist militia in Kansas called the Jayhawkers. They were named after a mythical bird, the Jayhawk, that was said unable to be killed. Silas was still a teenager at the time, but he was known to be very brave, skilled, and very popular. He ended up becoming a member of the elite group of Jayhawkers who raided pro-slavery towns, kidnapped slaves, and brought them into freedom. He also helped imprisoned Underground Railroad conductors escape from jail. This elite group was called the Jayhawker 10. To those who were on their side, they were known as the Immortal 10. To people they fought against, they were known as the Terrible 10. While Silas was in the state of Virginia, he got word from his family that the Terrible 10 were being hunted in Kansas, so they warned him not to go back anytime soon. He took a break off from Jayhawkers and went to Boston, Massachusetts, where he grew up. In the year 1860, Silas moved to Colorado to join his older brother William to mine quartz. Soon after, in 1861, the Civil War started. The United States Civil War was between the Union, which were northern states, and the Confederates, which were southern states. The goal of the Union was to unify the entire country and completely abolish slavery. At the time, Colorado was not yet a state but most of its people aligned with the Union. They were anti-slavery, and they created a pro-Union volunteer army known as the Colorado First Regiment. Silas was one of the first to enlist. Silas was only 22 years old, but he had more experience than most of the other people in the regiment, so he soon quickly became a first lieutenant. He fought in the Battle of Glorietta Pass, where they successfully kept the Confederate Army from moving west. With that win, the regiment became an official United States Cavalry Unit. The men and their leader, Colonel John Shivington, were considered war heroes. Silas in particular stood out for his bravery. Shivington promoted Silas to captain and placed him in charge of Fort Lyon along with Major Edward Winkoop. At that time in Colorado, it was common for Native Americans to be discriminated against. They were thought of as less. Treating them fairly and equally was not a popular idea, especially with Shivington and Territorial Governor John Evans. Silas Soule and Edward Winkoop both wanted the Native Americans to be treated fairly. They helped negotiate two very important treaties with the natives of Colorado, the Cheyenne and the Apaho. With those treaties, the Cheyenne and Apaho believed they would be under the protection of the United States government. Silas and Edward both thought peace was made. However, Shivington and Governor Evans both seem to already have been planning an attack on both the tribes, even though peace was made. On November 28, 1864, Colonel Shivington gathered his troops together and he told them there was an imminent attack coming from the Cheyenne and Apaho. He explained that they had to go attack first. Silas soon realized that there was no information to support this idea. 
He realized that Shivington simply wanted to attack and raid the peaceful Cheyenne and Apaho village of Sand Creek. Now at that time, Sand Creek was filled with mostly kids, women, and elderly. The majority of the warriors of the tribes were at a different location. Silas violently opposed Shivington's plan. He stated that no one in Sand Creek was armed, and he even told Shivington directly that he'd be a murderer and a coward if he continued with the attack. Shivington did not like that. He actually threatened to hang Silas and take control of his men, but Silas continued to oppose. Even with Silas protesting and with all his efforts, the cavalry still gathered at Sand Creek on November 29th. As they came to Sand Creek, they had the Union flag flying, signifying that the Union was there and they were under United States protection. They were trying to mislead the peaceful natives in Sand Creek so they wouldn't know that an attack was coming. Colonel Shivington then ordered the attack and it turned into a massacre. About 150 peaceful natives were slaughtered. I'm not gonna go into full details. You guys can look this up on your own. But the attack was brutal. Kids, women, elderly, slaughtered, murdered in the most heinous ways. It was literally a violent bloodbath. After the massacre, Colonel Shivington wrote letters to his superiors in Washington, D.C. And he told them that the cavalry had bravely fought against hostile natives and won a great battle for the United States. Shivington completely changed the narrative and made it seem like he did something great for his country. But really, it was pure genocidal violence. In that letter, he also stated that he would be keeping a close eye on the troublesome Captain Silas Soul. He wrote that Silas proved to be a greater friend to the natives than to the whites. Essentially, he tried smearing Silas Soul's name and made it seem as if he was problematic to the United States. Silas was shocked and horrified by the massacre and was extremely angry that Shivington changed the story and made it seem as if it was a battle. He was also very angry that the cavalry was made to seem as they were heroes. Silas was determined to let the truth be known. He wrote letters to a variety of people, Edward Wincoop, Walt Whitman, and United States congressmen, giving them full details about exactly what happened. In January of 1865, the United States government launched a full investigation into the massacre of Sand Creek. Silas was a key witness and he testified against Shivington and the Calvary. By that time frame, Shivington had already retired from the army, so he could not be tried in military court. Because of the key role that Shivington played in the Civil War, he was let loose and not convicted of any criminal charges. Unfortunately, he didn't face any major consequences. Shivington did have aspirations to become a governor or a politician, but because of the truth brought forward by Silas Soul, Shivington ended his career in disgrace. Shivington soon became known as the Butcher of Sand Creek. After the investigation, Silas Soul hoped that life would return to normal. He soon met and fell in love with a woman named Hersa, and on April 1st, 1865, they married. Just weeks later, on April 23rd, 1865, Silas and Hersa were walking home from a night out with friends. On their way home, they heard gunfire in a nearby alleyway. Silas ran to go check it out, but it ended up being a trap. Two assassins were there and killed Silas cold-blooded in the alleyway. By the time the police got there, the murderers were gone. In fear of Hersa's life being in danger, she moved to Boston with Silas Soul's mother. The assassins who killed Silas were eventually caught and arrested, but they escaped prison before their trial. Both men were identified as men that were part of Shivington's cavalry, and it's believed that Shivington hired both assassins, but it was never proven. Silas Soul is the reason that the truth of the Sand Creek Massacre is known today. He's remembered for his strong morals and bravery. The Cheyenne and Apaho tribes visit the grave of Silas Soul every year during the annual healing run to honor victims of the Sand Creek Massacre. In 2010, the Colorado Historical Society unveiled a historical marker at the spot in downtown Denver where Silas Soul was murdered. Although Silas died at age 26, he is still remembered as one of the most important figures in Colorado's history. He was a great man and a leader that I believe more people need to know about. People like him who fight for what's right, who fight for other people, are the type of people that we should all recognize. I highly recommend you guys look more into Silas Soul and the great things that he did. He's a great example of what humans can be. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to drop a like and a comment, and please share this video with as many people as you can. Let's get the name of Silas Soul known across the world. Even nearly 200 years later, we still need people like Silas Soul.